fantastic yeah. um well let's do uh let's do a quick little intro and then we'll just dive right in um do you want to do it the, to put me on the spot what do you do it no hey, I, I, hey. I, 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 <laughs> hello everybody welcome hello back. welcome to, to another watch party <laughs> yeah this is exciting uh we are of course fates wide wheel quantum leap podcast with sam and dennis i'm sam that's dennis uh, and uh we just got through watching fly the friendly skies which was written by alex berger and alex has joined us alex welcome to the show thank you thanks so much for having me thanks for being such great supporters of the show yeah absolutely our our pleasure sincerely um and also welcome back to the show drew lindo for his third uh appearance on the show i think drew that at this particular point the sooner you come back the better because then you'll be able to actually beat dean for appearances on the show i was gonna say so... dean has got me so beat so don't even act like i'm a record holder dean <laughs> dean holds the prize just like yes and you get like a five timers club jacket and then drew has to do a special yes the fifth time <laughs> yes, I, am, exactly. I am the i'm the john ham to dean's you know emmy winning uh brian cranston right now so he's gonna take several more appearances okay well i i welcome the occasions when those will happen because it's always a great time to have you on and i appreciate you being here and more importantly i appreciate you uh helping to set all this up because uh it's a thrill when we get to speak with uh, you guys and i'm certainly looking forward to talking about this episode um so let's just dive right in alex uh i i really enjoyed the episode a great deal and i think one of the things that i noted even in in our um episode that we recorded last night uh, is that there was something so very seamless about the interaction between the HQ stuff and the leap stuff that it, it felt so tied together um, in ways that we might not have really seen yet you know there's certainly these past couple of episodes i think that the the project stuff has been supporting the leap maybe even a little bit more than in prior episodes um but this one it just felt that they were so tied together so inseparable can you talk a little bit about you know getting to that uh, uh direction uh with this episode you know and, and and just kind of the way that that was mapped out and how and how you accomplish that yeah, sure. So we try, thank you for that. We, we try as much as we can to have the HQ story and the leap tie together in a number of ways. I mean, obviously thematically is a big part of it. And so the journey that Ben is going through in this episode and the journey that Ian is going through in this episode have a lot of parallels. And uh, thank you to Drew who was a big, uh, you know, pusher of that in the room and sort of helping us sort of craft that part of that story. Um, and then, uh, you know, emotionally as well, like you want the characters to be carrying forward what is going on in their personal lives into the leap. So it doesn't feel like those things are siloed. And obviously Ben coming off of the sort of seismic events of the last episode and nearly dying, you know, now has a great amount to which he can't feel like he can't trust people. And obviously Addison is helping him through that journey. And this is not the Ben that she knows and loves. And so that's really challenging for her. And then this is one where you know, we've done it a couple of different times this season, but we, we tried to do it a lot in this episode where just from a sort of forensic plot perspective, the HQ team is really helping figure out what's going on in the leap. They're trying to figure out what crashed this plane, sort of playing investigator, Ian obviously being a fan of uh, air disasters and knowing a lot about this flight. Um, it was a fun sort of gear for us to let them play and um, just kind of using the HQ team to sort of bounce off of what's going on in, in the leap and vice versa. You know, Drew, Drew wrote that episode uh, episode 109, where there was sort of a murder mystery going on in the past and in the present uh, team sort of helping to solve that one, which we try to do that, uh, you know, a couple times a year and, and do it a little bit more as we go. Yeah, the, the, that's a great point, because I think, yeah, there were definitely kind of some parallels with fellow travelers in the way that the, the team operated in order to kind of help supply Ben with the information um, that he needed. And I love, too, that is, and this is something that I feel like the show just does very well in general, but this episode certainly had um, the, the hallmark of sort of subvert subverting the expectations and, and, and taking some twists uh, and turns where, you know, I don't think we saw everything coming in particular with, like, the character of Les. Leslie, um, and, 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 you know, there were so many theories as to why the plane went down and having to kind of explore some of that stuff before you might hit a dead end or something new pops up. Um, talk a little bit about the importance of, of doing that and kind of keeping the audience on their toes, um, by not just following like one, you know, maybe predictable set of, of, of events, uh, through, you know, to the end. Yeah, I mean, that's a big part of, of writing procedural television. I've written a lot of procedural shows and I think the biggest, um, 
thing that you have to contend with is that audiences are pretty savvy now. You know, if you watch an episode yeah. of, uh, you know, my, my wife watches an episode of Law and Order and she knows who the killer is pretty early because it's usually the person who's the biggest actor on the show. Uh. <laughs> so you kind of have to know like, the audience is going to be guessing and the audience has seen a lot of television, especially these days, um, a lot of sort of network television. We have the luxury of not being a formulaic show. We're doing a different thing every week. So we get to sort of break new ground every week. But at the same time, people in this particular genre have seen airplane hijacking stories. They've seen sort of, you know, mysteries of this kind. And so it was a big part of the story structure of what are the audience's expectations going to be? They're going to assume that it was the flight attendant who went into the, was trying to go to the, the cocktail with coffee. So let's make sure that we lean into that, you know, misassumption and then reverse it. And, and then the other thing is just using Ben's emotional place in order to drive the story. So Ben is not a trusting person. And so he's going to be skeptical of everybody on the plane and using that as a way to create suspects around every corner. Um, was sort of a big part of how we constructed that. Yeah, I, and I, I thought, again, I thought that it was very successful because I, and one of the things that I really liked about it too is that even though they might have ultimately turned into red herrings. I loved the weight that was given to the pilots, you know, mental health. Uh, I, I loved kind of the, you, you know, the, um, I, I want to say this in a sensitive manner, and I'm not quite sure how to, but uh, the at least acknowledgement of the IRA and you know that particular point in history, you, you know, especially for the area we're talking about 71, there was a lot going on um, at that particular point in time, you know, with that organization and with the troubles. Um, so I appreciated kind of those those thematic elements and 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 the you know the historical touchstones um, a great deal. Uh, the choice to have it ultimately become, a, you know, a story about a disgruntled employee, basically, um, and 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 holding the the son of the owner of the airline ran, uh, for for ransom. Um, where did that come from? Like, how did you land on that? No pun intended. And um, what uh, were there ever? You know, was there ever any other route that you considered going um, during you know writing the script? Yeah, I mean, you you struggle with these things because they're you know, 42 and a half minutes long. And, and that doesn't even account for the fact that we're on the HQ set for a fair amount of that. So you have like 30 minutes to really build out characters, red herrings, reveals, twists, turns, and, you know, a good portion of that is going to be devoted to what Ben is going through and what Ben cares about. So to actually have an amount of depth to the bad guys in this kind of show is really hard. Um, and so for us, we wanted it to feel like something that felt like it came from a place of character, that felt like it came from a real place. And if we just made them sort of faceless, nameless, bad guys from TBD terrorist group, A, that's not really a thing that we really want to represent on our show because that's not really what we do. But also it's just, it doesn't feel like it comes from a real emotional grounded place. We would have loved to have, and we had more story about who these hijackers were and, and their backstory. I mean, obviously there's like a very quick allusion to the fact that they're dating. Um, and we had a little bit more about who the, the, the gunmen were and, and sort of they had been laid off and you know a lot of backstory to that. That's just, there's no time for unfortunately. So. Sure. It, the challenge is just doing it in as efficient way as possible. And, and obviously we, we wish we could have done more, but that's, this was the best we could do for the amount of time that we had. Yeah. You know, I, the, the thing is, is for me personally, I uh, love the fact that so much time is spent on, you know, character and, and, and that uh, at, at times I, I feel like we've been treated to these wonderful moments for um, our, our series regulars, you know, and our, our leads, obviously um, this episode no exception the the parallel journey as you mentioned before that ian and ben are on over the course of this episode feels extremely important um and uh without giving anything away um you know and, and drew seems to be really really good at this so we're going to test you uh how important do you view these character moments for ian and ben especially going into the finale very <laughs> I mean, look, I, excellent like, <laughs> you passed the test it's always you know i think it's always a thrill for us to get to put other characters in the imaging chamber you know this show is so siloed between you know sort of the ben addison story and then what's going on with the rest of the characters and obviously caitlin gets to kind of float between those two but it's you know we've had to get jen in there earlier and we've got nian in there and that's it's just it's a it's hugely important to us and to to get um, more of the depth of those relationships because, you know, Ian was Ben's best friend and, you know, they miss Ben in a different way than Addison, but there's still a pain there that they feel when their best friend has, you know, disappeared and, and sort of, you know, obviously we tried to speak to that with the sort of the, the likeness about the trivia team, but obviously they're going <laughs> a lot more um, profound than that. And it was, you know, in, again, I, I mentioned that Drew, uh, that Drew was really, you know, sort of 
component of let's make sure that we earn that story and feel like that's something that they're going through over the course of the whole episode. But when they finally show up and play hero in that final act, it feels like a part of their journey over the course of the episode. And I, you know, Mason obviously knocks it out of the park and did an incredible job with it. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think, you know, Mason's work in general has is, is, is always been superb, but there was something about their journey in, in this episode that I really connected with. And I felt like the, again, the mirroring of that in Ben's journey, um, it, it just felt important. And it, I felt like it was very well done. You know, the fact that we've got these two people who are having kind of a crisis of faith and, and for, for different reasons and yet in similar ways, and then seeing them together, um, I mean, again, the characters are just so have become so important to me. Um, it felt like a big payoff, quite frankly, seeing Ian and Ben, you know, sitting there together and interacting. The decision to inject the the script in general, but in particular those moments with so much humor. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I think I'm just allergic to uh, to seriousness, just <laughs> as a writer, and I I love you know sort of. I, I come from character-driven procedurals. I worked with Martin on Blind Spot for five years, which was more and more over the course of the, the, you know, the sort of deeper part of the show, very comedic. Um, and I think Quantum Leap, the original incarnation and the reboot are, are so infused with the lightness. And so to me, it's just like, you kind of have to find those moments. And you know, it can be, it can be a dark subject matter, obviously. And so the challenge is finding ways that the characters can be funny without feeling like they're glib or they're not taking the stakes seriously. And there were places where, there were some jokes that we pulled back on because the moment was really serious, but you know, we are less with a cast that can pull off a joke during a serious moment. And so I feel like you can give, you know, Ray or any of the rest of this cast something funny underneath, you know, a very serious high stakes scene and they're going to nail it. Yeah. And with, we obviously have an incredible guest cast, including, um, you know, our, our Corey, who was like so funny, um, you know, Drew can speak more to that because he was on set with you for the episode, but like just really brought to life that relationship and that, Sort of odd couple dynamics. Well, yes. before we go to Corey, I just want to say real quick that, you know, a lot of folks have been waiting for Ian to show up in the imaging chamber for much of the season. <laughs> and it's a testament to Alex that that all plays like a gigantic payoff and, and the humor and the, and the, like the jazz, like, you know, tempo that scene, I remember being on set and just being like, this is really, this is delivering on the promise of when these friends get back together. And I just thought everything, the trivia stuff to, uh, questioning life choices like it just I think Alex just wrote the hell out of that whole sequence so it really feels like a huge reward even though the tension of the scene is still rising because we're not out of the woods yet so I think uh, I just think I think you nailed it I think I'm, I'm proud of you you did a good job <laughs> and uh, and you know what Mason did okay too I think Mason did pretty good at that material yeah, yeah, I think they're gonna make it. I think they're gonna make it. Um, they got a future, they, right? They, right? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you, you said that because I, I think that one of the other things that I took away from it too, just you know, when kind of taking a little bit of a step back from my just emotional engagement and involvement with it, uh, is that the balancing act there of this incredibly tense moment and 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 one that has to feel kind of rewarding as our climactic moment of the episode, and yet still to have that kind of emotional payoff with our characters while also still injecting it with so much humor i mean just seriously kudos because i i felt like it was incredibly successful and it, it felt very rewarding in the context of the specific episode in the context of that relationship and in the context of you know the the season as a whole frankly you know i'll give some more kudos to our director linda mendoza who's unbelievably talented comes from comedy and so obviously the comedy moments were really natural to her but like the other thing that you don't realize about that set which drew was sort of uh, talking to me about as they're producing is that set was tiny. I mean, it was like shooting in a closet. And to the fact that there, there is depth and pathos and uh, sort of humor and emotion to that relationship when those two people are sitting, you know, cramped in this tiny cockpit and, you know, there's a camera crew in there and, uh, you know, various, you know, other challenges to that. It was, it was a real testament to just an incredible job well done by the whole crew. So um, here's something that uh, um, <laughs> that was mentioned by my co-host uh, last night when we were recording. So I'm going to let him jump in at any point, uh, so I don't, you know, massacre his idea here. But one of the things, do you want to do it, Dennis? Do you, you no, got... get, yeah, sure. I'll jump in because some people are asking this in the in the chat, and so I'll just ask this question more broadly. Like, can you talk about like the thought process of what it means to take Ziggy offline? and for it to almost not matter. And where is that going to lead in the in the season finale and for next well, I season? I obviously can't give you any, um, any spoilers, but finale. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I mean, I think it didn't, I, I would argue it, it doesn't not matter. I mean, I think that, you know, mm -hmm. the, there was a couple of different things going on. First of all, you know, again, this was another pitch of Drew's that, that Ziggy was the mole, which I thought was kind of a brilliant twist of, um, of the previous episode. And so taking Ziggy offline is sort of the only logical conclusion to that. Um, you know, obviously there's some things that we can do without Ziggy. We can locate Ben. We located Ben in the pilot without Ziggy of being back online. Like we, we'd sort of made a decision in a room that that's something that, that can be done. But, you know, not having AI to sort of speed up the decisions makes a big difference for the decision calculus as you're trying to weigh choices. And I think what was even more important to us than the sort of plot moves of, Ziggy like says, there's a 65% chance of this failing, was the emotional resonance for, for Ian's character because sure. it was so personal to them when this, uh, you know, accusation comes down that Ziggy is corrupted and, and it's sort of like almost like a part of them. And then then realizing that it's not the code that makes them talented, it's them and that the team mm -hmm. can't do it without them, not their code. Um, so the journey was much more important to us for sort of what it does for, for Ian's character. Obviously, sure. some plot pieces to it that, you know, happened in this episode and we can't get into it in the next episode and beyond because it would spoil a lot of things. But <laughs> that's the best I can do without any spoilers. I, yeah, you, you know, it's interesting because I think that, it, and I am one who believes that the perspectives are valid, like I'm not trying to say that, you know, anyone is right or wrong, but from my perspective, I appreciate, again, you know, what it means to the characters and seeing, you know, the way that these characters react to these situations. Um, but I do think, again, that there is that other valid perspective that sometimes there are elements of the plot um, that people want to either have resolution for or, or have a little bit more about. Can you talk about the decision in the episode to not necessarily address head on or spend more time on? Because I, again, personally, I feel like it was addressed, you know, early in the episode with the conversation about taking Ziggy offline, but maybe not to expand upon the fact that Ziggy is the mole and what that means and where do we go from here, um, as opposed to, again, telling a, a story that was a little bit more about what these characters are going to do in the wake of this, you know, how Ian is going to react to all this, how Ben gets through, again, almost dying and, and having to deal with the trauma of that. There's some of that that I can't really talk about because it gets into the finale. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, I think a large part of the answer to most questions when you're asking why didn't you get into this is just time. You know, like it would have been great to do a whole sequence about Ben being stuck in a fork in the road and not having the gi in order to, to guide his decision or the team sort of digging into what it means that Ziggy is mole. But like, obviously, we talk about how, you know, Martinez is, is a step ahead of us because of, of Ziggy. And so we, get into it a little bit but like it doesn't you just don't have the time to really go that deep but uh drew, drew has his hand raised super lately yes so, indeed Thank i you. do <laughs> i do back on the clock just like the writer's room well i was just gonna say you know what's interesting is that ben ben's relationship with ziggy is not the same as everybody else's you know in the room uh, and sorry at, at ql you know everybody has more of a, a working relationship with ziggy ben is on the other side of a telephone game and it it's mm -hmm. borderline adversarial because part of the fun of the show the original, I think, and even with our with our continuation, is that it's Ben's gut versus the odds that Ziggy provides is, is a big part of I think the, the drama and the tension of the show. So that's what made I think Alex's script so special. Is it really feels like an Ian story because of Ian's personal, more personalized relationship with Ziggy and the work they've done, reconstituting that code and and being the gatekeeper and uh, and being the keeper of of this incredible AI. So it really feels like an Ian story more so than like Ben sitting there wondering about, you know, Ben's Ben's on the ground in the time and and having to make these improvisational life or death decisions. Um, and, and and the character we've been developing over the season has learned more and more. To, and it's, it's what Alex wrote in the story, which is that he has to sort of trust his heart uh, when it comes down to these split second decisions. Whereas Ian really has to wrestle with what is my place and, and what, what can I do when I don't have this thing that feels like an extension of of my abilities and my own personality. Yeah, and again, I mean, I feel like that that's something that I was really attracted to over the course of the episode because it it feels it feels weighty and it feels like that that in, in a way it ratchets up the stakes for the characters going into the finale and in particular with that leap out, right? I mean, the leap out, the who are the two people that we see are are Ben and Ian. Um, Alex, talk about that. You know, here's something that I'm curious about because I don't necessarily know how it always works. Um, I, you know, we've we've talked about this a bit with the classic series, and I think we've talked about it a little bit on this one. But did you write the leap out, or was the leap out written by Margarita for next week? Margarita, and and, okay. and you know, it's it's a 
we, we, you know, we talk about all the stories together as a room. So every one of these stories has come up with as a group. Um, so we know as we're doing each leap, what the leap out is going to be. And we try as best we can to think about what that 30 seconds or one minute is going to be and how it tonally relates to the previous episode. Sometimes you want it to tonally relate. And sometimes you want it to be a huge tonal shift because of the fun of, I've just been in this like dark episode about an insane asylum and now I'm on an airplane, you know, with a, <laughs> wearing a, a polyester pants, uh, skirt suit. Um, and then every once in a while, we don't do the leap out because it feels like there's a seismic enough ending in the, in the present day story to not, or, or sometimes in the previous leap to feel like you just want to end there and not have it be tainted by a different leap. Um, so in this particular case, you know, in almost every, basically in every case, it's, it's written by the writer of the next episode. And then we tack it onto the previous episode. If it's, if it's a good match. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I think, um, it felt pretty seismic. There's definitely a lot of woes. Uh, I, can, can you talk about, um, and, and, and obviously drew hop in on this as well, but the fact that see now i have to ask a question and i'm like well they're probably not going to be able to answer this so should i even bother asking the question <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and try to break them that's why i love yeah, asking right, those right, questions exactly. break Let's them see what, see what see you can like, slip yeah. out um, turn my camera off so you can't <laughs> <laughs> see we've tested drew's poker face before and it's mm -hmm. pretty amazing like i'm never yeah. gonna i'm never gonna get into a card game you know for money with that guy uh but uh no being in the future um and and uh, the fact that now it seems like you know, the whole point, if you will, of Ben's initial leap was to get to this spot in the future as it was laid out by Ian early on. Um, is there anything you can tell us about the future that Ben is now in? Is Ben Ben? Is he inhabiting his own body? Has he leapt into someone else? Is there is there anything at all that you can tell us about that leap out? <laughs> um, I can tell you it is uh, an incredible episode. When we came up with the story, we were all, this is not going to give you any spoilers. It's just going to kind of tease you, but it is uh, in, in, insanely satisfying and, and fun and emotional. Uh, it is sort of like the perfect culmination of where we've been going this season, but I can give you virtually no specific information. Drew might have uh, an ability to tiptoe around it even better than I, but uh, I'm not sure that there's, there's any way to answer your question without getting fired. <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, <laughs> Drew, Drew, do you have anything to add to that? No. <laughs> um, no but so I, I will I say this. I will no, say like, the one thing. I, you've heard it, I, I will say that just on a, on a narrative level, you know, we we see where the episode ends and where we're where we're where we're starting from the next episode. But I think obviously, um, just echoing what what. Alex is saying, I think Margarita wrote a, a fantastic finale and it really feels like an earned payoff to things that I think people weren't even aware we were setting up just on, on just from the perspective of our characters there. And, and we're heading into a finale where, you know, we've established that Ben is is a pacifist and is not is not a killer. And we've really shown with the last couple of episodes just how uh, how how much the odds are against him. So I think it's it's an amazing I'm really proud of the season. I think the whole room and, and Martin and, under Martin and Dean's leadership have really built a, a momentum of, of of story and character development that will feel very satisfying. And um, I just, you know, I'm excited for you all to see because I think we we really, I think we stuck the landing personally. And that's not a pun. That's just legitimate description of what was accomplished. I can give you a short anecdote, which is that I joined the show in the middle of the season. I, I came on as we were breaking episode 13. And oh, okay. uh, wow. the very first week of the show was, you know, Martin and Dean and the rest of the staff had sort of a pretty good idea of where they wanted to end it in the big picture, but they wanted to get more granular. And so they stopped after episode 12 and said, let's really talk about where we're ending in a more specific way so we know exactly what we need to set up. And that was my first day. And I had <laughs> a massive headache when I got done with work that night because it was so mind boggling to listen to the description of this ending it was it was heady and satisfying and thrilling and i was like these people are absolutely brilliant and i have just walked into a room full of geniuses um so that is only more way of, of hyping up how good this finale is going to be but um but yeah it's it's i think it's really uh we really nailed it excellent because so the people who've watched every episode which is exactly who we're talking to it will be extremely rewarding 
Uh, I, I am so looking forward to it. I, well, it's bittersweet. I don't want the season to end. And yet I am, you know, I'm so looking forward to this, um, it, you know, and then and then we have to wait like six months. Uh, <laughs> but uh, to, to, to go to maybe a couple of things um, uh, on a lighter level uh, and go away from the finale for a second. Um, Alex, how aware were you that you were absolutely setting up a Chekhov's gun by introducing the under pressure duet <laughs> between uh, Ben and Ian? <laughs> Uh, look, you got to talk to uh, the money <laughs> people about how expensive that that would be. But yeah, that's not my money, so go for it. Um, I really, I really, I really hope it could happen um, because that would be that would be lovely. Uh, it, it, Raymond was on. Um, uh, a show this morning he was he was doing a number of appearances i know this morning and uh on one of them they they cajoled him into singing a, a couple of bars and obviously I've, I've heard mason sing quite a bit um but uh yeah i would love to i would love to see that duet so uh hopefully it could happen um dennis i know you had another question about uh the ending uh we were talking last night in our conversation about the episode and about Corey and um you know what he accomplished at the end of the episode and and as far as you know getting to see that do you want to do you want to talk a little bit about that and ask alex about that and and drew because i think drew obviously being uh, on set on for producer, production would be yeah for sure was there ever a discussion like if you had a bigger budget and more time like showing Corey what hooking up the hydraulics thing powering the couple links whatever techno babble <laughs> it is the, the heroic thing was it just a matter of like production and time that you weren't able to show that Primarily, I mean, I'll, I'll also let Drew speak to it because he was on set. I mean, I think it's in some way we wanted to be with Ben and Ian because that's mm -hmm. where the emotional investment in the show is. And so even if you gave me a lot more money, I'm not sure that I would have spent the time there because I was really, you know, sort of uh, as an audience member, I'm hooked into what's going on between them and wanting to sort of let them be the heroes together. I mean, it would have been, you know, if we if we could have built an avionics bay and saw Corey go down there for a couple of seconds, it would have been kind of fun. But it's, you know, sure. um, I, I don't feel, you know, there's a bunch of decisions when you're making episodic television, you feel like, oh, I wish I had more money about that. I don't actually really have a huge regret about not being able to see that piece of it. There's other pieces I would have loved to have seen. Yeah. Were there, yeah, did, so just, much, just to echo okay, that for a second, I, I think I, I think also it's usually we we, we kind of have a quantum leap formula where we we resolve the, the the conflict and have an epilogue usually with our person of the week that we've, you know, uh, helped out. And I think with this episode, it was such a seismic event to have Ben reunited with his best friend that it felt like we could break form for for once and 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 live with this reunion because it is it, what's nice about the way the episode is structured is that we get sort of that wrap up with um, between Ben and and Corey but you know before the climax is over and we really go sure. through these two characters instead who have a much deeper relationship and who we've been waiting to see reunited for you know sixteen episodes so yeah I think it's I think it was the right judgment call just based on where we're most invested at that point for sure along those lines i always like to ask this question when we have a chance were there any darling moments in this episode that you just simply had to cut for time that you really wish you some nice character moments that just had to go because you didn't have the time for it good question it's been so long i can't think oh, of sure. it yeah. the top of my, i mean there's there's obviously there's usually you know stuff that i you know like honestly it wasn't so much darling character moments. I, I did a lot of research on, air, on uh, airplane hijacking. You put, was, yeah, put this on Twitter. I'm really interested in this. There was so yeah. many mind-blowing facts about airplane hijackings in the 70s that I wish that I could have had, like, you know, you can give a little TED talk about. But <laughs> you know, like, sometimes it's one of those things where you're like, I wish I had 44, 45, 46 minutes. Even if we did, I'm not sure that, you know, sort of going off on those tangents was really, you know, one of the things that the, the hallmark of this episode was it just we, we wanted it to feel propulsive and on rails. And it just felt like every time you sidetracked me into a little lecture about airplanes, it just felt like it was a talk topic. So I can't remember. I'm sure that I have a, I have a memory of a calendar. So I'm sure that there's ones that I'm not. You know. Sure. <laughs> I think it's mostly, yeah, we just made it made trims and dialogue, but it was, I don't remember any, any actual character moments coming out per se. I think, I think everything was. It's pretty much there and plus also your um what's also fun about about our show is you know ray and caitlin will oftentimes create moments all their own so there's 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 various mm. moments in the episode where improv sort of little moments come up that are that weren't even there on the script but they develop on the day so mm. um, we're always looking for those moments too that are that are created on the spot by the actors 
That's really cool to hear. I'm curious because it felt like the scenes that uh, that they shared in this episode were, were honestly some of my favorites uh, of the season thus far. Um, the you know the first initial moment when the, you know when Addison pops in, there's just something so like assured about Caitlin's performance as Addison now, and it, and it just it, it just fits and feels so good. And then you know Raymond, of course, is just incredible, and seeing them together um, as they're kind of trying to parse out the aftermath of, of the previous episode and, and, and where things are going. Um, are there any moments, you know, and, and Alex, obviously feel free to jump in about the writing, but Drew, I'll, I'll pose this to you. Are there any moments on set, you know, with those interactions, both that one and then later on when they're kind of like in the galley and, 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 you know, been still having that crisis of faith that stand out to you about those interactions between the two of them? Well, the one you mentioned actually does stand out. Cause I think I remember we, a couple of days before we shot the scene, uh, Ray read it and was like, I want to go, I want to spend just another beat with this because it was such a, they had just shot, I mean, keep in mind when we're shooting these episodes, they're just going back to back. So you're, you get a week off, but, but our actors don't. So, you know, <laughs> Caitlin had been sobbing over Ray's bloody body, you know, uh, only a couple of days prior and, and they had lived through that moment. And so I remember Ray asking, can we, can we go, you know, can we extend the scene a little bit to just let it breathe more and, and, sure. And land in the fact that they want that that Addison is also carrying the weight of these leaves to some degree, almost as much as Ben is. And so we adjusted the scene just to give them more of that moment. And and they both did it beautifully, which is that Caitlin's character has to, you know, she's she's a, a woman of military service and she has this incredible strength and temerity, but she's also having to to carry the weight of watching the person she loves the most in the world nearly get themselves killed every week. And so Get, letting them have that moment extended and and go further is great and and those are the instincts they they always have with every episode. If there's a moment they feel like they'd like to adjust, and this is the benefit of having writers on set, no matter whether it's your own or somebody else's, is we can always tailor something or adjust something to help the actor feel more comfortable, and then they give us their best. So um, so yeah, things like that and and just little um, little moments. I mean, Caitlin always comes up with them, even just Ray. Ray grabbing the telephone and speaking to her over the mm. telephone in front of the, no, that was all Ray, you know, but these are just, <laughs> that's the collaboration we do is that, you know, they get this amazing script that's full of these great new things they get to do. And then they bring themselves to it and want to, and want to innovate and make the scene feel as alive as possible. And they do. That's fantastic. Alex, when writing those scenes, how do you steer away from, you know, devolving into too much melodrama into getting too, you know, too sappy? Yeah. I mean, I think, sometimes you just write it the first time as sort of on the nose as you know as you want and then strip it out because I always find it's easier to sort of take out that stuff than than feel like it's not there and have to put it back in and oftentimes what ends up happening in in bad television which I don't think it's making is that you know you're asked to put in can you tell us how the character's feeling here can you we're not trapped mm. in the emotion you end up with these lines that are recorded after the episode is shot where the character says I'm really angry at you and you're on their back and so I think that that you know part of the the, the craft is making sure those those emotional beats are there without the character saying exactly what they're feeling. Um, and obviously we don't, you know, get that every single time, but that's a, that's a big aim um, of, of writing a script is just feeling like you are um, able to weave between these emotional moments of a scene. And uh, of course, over an episode, the emotional touch points of their arc over the episode without having to have them just come right out and say it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I again, I, I thought that that those moments were were among some of my favorites, and and I felt like it it you know was mission accomplished as far as that's concerned because it also never felt like a, they were just telling me you know how they feel. Um, it was just two people you know relating to one another, interacting in an honest and genuine fashion, especially given what had just happened. Um, the you know, we do have a couple of questions actually from from some of the folks in the room and I'd love to get to those um, and here's a, a great one um, from eternally phony um, and uh, they want to know is there a rhyme and reason behind Ben remembering Ian and magic without prompting but not Jen or Addison or is that just a you know is that just kind of you drew straws <laughs> I mean I think I, it's an inexact science right and I have like I like I said I wrote on this this show blind spot with with Martin previously which is another show about amnesia and a character recovering their memories and in the research we found that you know there's no real real exact pattern to it they, they come in fits and starts and sometimes it's you know a sense memory or a sound memory and so you know we we, we didn't want Ben to just remember everybody right away we wanted it to come in bits and pieces but we didn't want to make a huge deal out of like 
having to recover every single memory. So sometimes it's going to come quickly and sometimes it's not. It was not real. It's not because Ben didn't like Jen as much. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the fun of like, you know, that little bit of, of remembering magic and not remembering Jen was a fun little bit for that episode, uh, the courtroom episode. But um, yeah, it's, it's always nice to get Ben to recover some of these memories. And obviously the Addison one we wanted him to have to work for because that was a huge emotional yearning for him over the course of the first eight episodes. But um we didn't want to have to play that every single time. Yeah, it's so funny because I remember when we had Shakina on the show and we were talking to her uh, about Let Them Play. And of course, Ian watches the basketball game. And, you know, we asked her, we were like, if Ben had turned around, would he have recognized mm -hmm. Ian? And uh, she played it off very well. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, um, um, so it was, it was really, it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful moment. I, I, I keep coming back to it, but it, it just felt like, uh, you know, as soon as, as soon as that moment began, it was just, uh, you know, I felt like, yay, you know, we're, we're seeing this, we're seeing them together. And especially because I know from, you know, from my perspective, mm -hmm. I had put a lot of stock into that relationship and some of the things that Ian had said about their relationship you know in prior episodes i just felt like this is this is important there's something really important here and then of course when we learn that ian's the one that goes back in time to tell ben all of this you know that just seemed to kind of like raise that up even further and and and, and now to see them together and 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 to get the inkling of what might come in the finale um uh, it just feels very very important and 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 so it, in my mind it makes sense that ben remembered them um, as opposed to, to to maybe remembering the others and not necessarily as a reflection of not being friends with them, but just in general. Um, Drew, can you talk a little bit about, oh, you've raised your hand. I'm so sorry. I'm calling on you now. I, I can read your mind. I can read your mind. Sam. <laughs> sorry. What was your question? No, I, my question was, is I would just love to know what, you know, what it was like having the, the two of them together uh, because uh, off mic, luckily, uh, Nanrissa kind of gave away the fact that, you, you know, no! that, 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 that Raven and, and, and Mason would be sharing uh, some scenes together. Um, but luckily it was, it was done off mic uh, or maybe I had to edit it out. I can't recall Anyway, you just got um, her fired. I, I hope Jen. I didn't get, yeah, I hope She's I didn't gone. get her in trouble. Um, look, I'm I knew out. already. Okay. I knew. I, knew <laughs> I have to make a said, call right now. <laughs> I knew before she said a word. Um, but, uh, but that said, I, I am curious about what it was like, you know, just, just for them to be able to have that moment together, because, you know, one of the things that she was talking about is that, you know, with Ben Song for the defense, the opportunity to actually work with Raymond was so exciting because other than that cocktail party scene in the premiere episode, they didn't get to do that. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, it's it's not an accident that, as you can, see, you know, the way this episode ends and and where where and when we ben, end with Ben and and Ian somewhere, not not now. It's not <laughs> an accident that this this is that Alex's episode is is reuniting them in the present uh, because that emotional relationship and what we what we revealed in Shakina's episode back in one twelve is all all roads are converging. So it was important, obviously, for Ben's relationship and friendship with Ian to be rekindled before we reach to the end game that is all centered around how Ian started this whole thing. Um, and as for being on set, you know, yeah, what's, what's really fun is making people wait uh, <laughs> adds, adds a level of satisfaction to when we do change things up. And I remember the first time I was on here, I think for 109, you were like, it was really nice to see Ian in the chat. And like, we all want to see that, but, the, but in a way the, the uh, the longer you wait, you're pulling the slingshot back. So when you let go, it really soars. And 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 that's what I think is so great about Alex's episode is that it's it's not just like Ian shows up and and does some math. It's it's a it's a heroic, iconic kind of entrance and and yeah. storyline where these friends are, are are remembering each other and t and having this banter and and sort of slipping in like like an old glove in the middle of a super death defying situation where lives are on the line. So. Um, getting to see it play out, obviously Mason was thrilled to get their chance um, in in the leap with Ben, and had great material to work with. So so Mason came to play and was really excited. And and again, like like Alex brought up, like it's a small space. Felt like dude, we were in that we were, we were block shooting in there all day. And block shooting will, for people who don't know, it's just you're basically staying on an angle and just moving through scenes, doing coverage in one one position. So you'll shoot like five different, you know, three or four or five different scenes in one position, switch over here. And usually you do one scene at a time, you move on. When you're block shooting, you're just sort of in never time because you're just still on this. You're like, are we going backwards? Did we do this already? So there's mm -hmm. a lot of that going on that day where people got a little loopy, but we were all just so entertained watching Mason and Ray play off of each other and all that wonderful dialogue that Alex had written for them 
It just brought so much energy and, and so much chemistry. So there's all these things we imagine and we, we claim on screen and we get a chance to back it up, show it, you know, the actors always commit. And it's, again, it's a test when you go back and watch that, that first pilot episode, I really thought, I, I, I think they did an amazing, everybody did an amazing job just trying to breathe a little bit of familiarity into that one scene to show them as a family before we split them all up for the whole season. So every time we bring them back together, um, our actors do an amazing job of making it feel like this is the friendship we've spoken about from an HQ set for, for a whole season. And now we get to really let it breathe. Yeah. It, you know, and it also makes it remarkable too. I think that the, the, the way that the relationships have evolved over the course of the season in general as well, like it seems like Jen and Ian have gotten closer as the season has gone on because there were, like you say, there were relationships that were very well established early on, like Jen and Magic's relationship. Like I knew what that relationship was, you know, since day one, pretty much, but the way that we've seen like, you know, again, Jen and Ian's relationship evolve as the season has gone on um, has been really nice. Um, are, are, are you are you all excited over the prospect now of going into season two to do that even more to, to to get the opportunity to have these characters like grow even more together maybe apart maybe you know to really just have the opportunity to um you know to keep breathing life into them yeah i mean without, we obviously can't get into any of the specifics i will just say sure. in general, <laughs> as as you know drew and i have worked on a lot of shows over the years and like that's the fun is as you get deeper into the show you get to breathe so much more life into these characters really show their depth change them and grow them and that's the that's the great part about how you know this wasn't the case about episodic television really when the first quantum leap was on and you know to, to, to a large extent um mostly and even before but now you know audiences get so invested in these characters they want to see them grow they want to see them change they want to see them evolve they want to see them grow up and so you know the the you know if we're lucky enough to have a number of seasons of the show hopefully the the ben and the and the addison uh, uh, um and the magic and the gen and the ian that you know will be different people by the time that we get you know 40 or if we're blessed 60 or, or 80 episodes into the show so um that's the that's what makes television really magical is unlike a movie where you get two hours with the character and then you're done with them and maybe you write a sequel you get to live with these people for for hours and hours and hours and hours of of, of entertainment and so it, it's just really fun to be able to start pairing different people who haven't been paired together bring in new characters you know start talking about characters backstories start talking about who characters are related to and and why they're like they are i mean that's like that's the luxury you get when you get a second season yeah, you know, going back real quick to something else you said that I think kind of relates to this is you mentioned you came in on episode 13 and now having the you know, the opportunity to have kind of been with this season, knowing that, you know, y'all are already working on season two um, and, you know, have gotten a, a bit into that. I'm just curious from your perspective, you know, coming in kind of later, coming into where, you know, the first order basically ended because it was that those 13 episodes and then, you know, got the additional episodes after that. Uh, uh, what has your perspective been like, you know, on the show in general and going forward, what, what excites you about continuing to work on the show? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was lucky enough to just watch the show as a fan. I mean, I had worked with, with Martin and a couple of the other writers on other shows before. And so when the show premiered, I was on another show and I just got to watch it as a fan and I loved the first number of episodes. And then, you know, when Martin started uh, talking to me about coming on the show, I got a chance to read ahead a little bit and watch a couple of cuts. And I was so like, uh, you just get to absorb it as a fan. You know, when you, when you're writing a show, you're, you know, all the choices you didn't make, you know, how excruciating <laughs> you know, all the different versions you didn't do, you know, the sort of compromises you had to make, but when you're a fan, and even if you're on the show and you're absorbing these things, just the script or just the cut, you get to just watch it and enjoy it for what it is. And so I got to sort of play along for that ride. I think I read maybe the first eight scripts when I joined the show, and there were maybe outlines for four more and a plan for where it was going after that. Um, so I just, you know, I came at it as as somebody who was just intrigued by the journey and wanted to know where it went, and and I had a couple of soft thoughts and fresh eyes, but honestly, most of them were things that the the staff had talked about and had had chosen to do a different way or, you know, well, yeah, we're doing that, but we just haven't gotten there yet. Um, and then, you know, what you hope is that you come in with a little bit of, you know, some fresh ideas about like, well, what, have you thought about shooting on this set? Or have you thought about going to this kind of place and get you a couple episodes out of that? Or, um, you know, just like hearing an idea that was dismissed the first time around, but maybe you have a new fresh perspective on it. But honestly, like the show was really doing, you know, so much interesting stuff that I felt like I was just coming in as an extra, as extra set of hands and getting to sort of, um, be an extra voice in the room and, and, and somebody that had, you know, worked in a lot of procedural television. So I know how to break procedural, <laughs> story, you know how to break the serialized story and, um, uh, you know, just in, in get to enjoy the ride. 
Nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that that's one of the things that has been so uh, fun is just enjoying that ride. And, um, and I'm curious, you know, what you would say, Andrew, of course, I'd love to hear your perspective on this as well. Um, but what would you say to the people that seem to be maybe, you know, wanting more, wanting it right now. Because again, you know, from my perspective, I've really enjoyed the ride, you know, getting from the beginning to getting to hear, you know, all the character moments that we've had. So I, I'm just kind of curious what your perspective is maybe on the, if I may say, impatience uh, of perhaps of some viewers and some sectors uh, of the fandom. Um, I mean, I'll let you answer as well, but I, I think that's a sign you're doing something right. You know, I, <laughs> there's, um, you know, I talk about that, like, the, the, on the show The Office, everybody wanted more Dwight. Um, and, and yet, if you made the show about Dwight, the show wouldn't have worked because Dwight is comic relief. Um, everybody wanted, you know, uh, Ross and Rachel to get together faster on Friends, but if you got them together, then you're just watching the show about two people who are in love, and that's not really entertaining. So I think if you're leaving the audience wanting more and leaving the audience asking, why can't we watch more of this? It means that you've hooked them in and that they're intrigued and that they want more. And there's only so much you can do in, in you know, when you have 18 hours and a season to tell a story. And, um, and hopefully we'll get a chance to get to all the things that people want us to do. Keep giving us, keep watching the show, keep getting us more seasons and we'll get to all of it. I hope so. Drew, what about you? Well, I, you know, I think from what I had read, I, I, I knew people were like where the like answers was a thing i remember reading about here and there and what's funny is like you know the the online discourse is not always the same thing as the discourse you know in a non-online setting so there's people who watch the sure. show on twitter or reddit who are like what why did ben leap what's it about is it about sam yada 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 like those are the, it's, the, it's the theory you know sphere and then the people who watch it because they just want to see ben go through time and help people and, ha and have a fun <laughs> hopeful you know what I mean? And so there, there are these are different sort of um, percentages of of our of our, our of our audience, and so we kind of have to 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 lead with our gut, which is we have to satisfy, we have to make the actual adventures and these stories and the human stories really captivating week to week, and sprinkle in this stuff that is really exciting to think about. But like, trust us, having been in the room and and worked through some of these mythology centric episodes, it's very easy for them to overwhelm the heart and the focus of what Ben is doing week to week. And so that that's a that's something we, we keep in mind is that we we're gonna pay off we if we do our jobs right, we will pay off those questions. But we have to satisfy just the true nature of Ben's job, which is to go into a stranger's life and and change it for the better and and hopefully uh, evolve as a as a person himself. I love that. I, I, yeah, I think that that's fantastic. I think that that's just, yeah, that's what the show can do. And that's, and that's what the show, you, you know, I think why it appeals to so many people uh, in general. And I, I think that it's been wonderful to see the way that you guys have kind of threaded that needle of having these sort of episodic stories, right? Because each leap has to be self-contained and yet also having that more serialized aspect of the show. Um, I certainly want to let you guys go here in just a moment before I do, uh, since we are almost to the end, we know the finale is next week. Um, uh, I feel like this is as good a time as any to ask. Um, and Alex, I'll go ahead and start with you because you had that unique perspective of starting off kind of just watching the show as a fan before you came to work on the show. Um, what has been your favorite episode of the season so far? All of them. You can't ask me. <laughs> He's um, a parent. He's not going to answer. He's a parent. He's going to answer. I like when we, we, we you know, I like when we do what you're what you're not expecting. And so as I came in as a fan, you know, seeing us go to the old west, I was like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. I can't like television budget. Um, and then leave to repeat, you know, I'm always a fan of a mm -hmm. star, it's like gonna break the rules. Um, fellow travelers, you know, as as a fan of uh just like any good mu music-based episode. Um, you know, and then um, you know, just the ones also that feel like they're they're about something, whether that's you know, a let them play, or you know, right after that, you do you know, family style, which is you know, a representation that you don't see a lot on network television, and then yeah, you know, uh, just listing more. But like I, the the, the USS Iowa episode, the um, the the battleship episode was came about. Obviously, we had this story that we wanted to tell about Addison's father, but I go to the USS Iowa with my kids all the time. Oh wow! Uh, and so I mentioned that there's a way to shoot on a battleship, and that kind of became uh, something that we could run with. So it was fun for me to get to see like this like little weekend activity that I get to do with my kids become an episode. Um, so I think I listed like half the season. But, uh, but, uh, <laughs> those are also all my favorites. No, I that that's totally fair. Uh, Drew, Drew, what about you? 
Um, you know, it's weird. I mean, I, yeah, I, I should probably plead the fifth as well as to like a favorite, <laughs> but I think, I think for me, it, it's more, um, I have favorite people that Ben met this year or that I met this year, mm -hmm. you know, on set. I mean, I produced five episodes this year. And so, um, so for example, for me, it's like meeting John Chafin on 103, meeting yeah. Deborah Ann Roll on 109, meeting, um, uh, an amazing young cast in one, well, in Shakina's episode, which was really fun, and one fifteen, um, Ben Zong for the defense. You know, DeAndre Lyle, which mm. was fantastic. Oh, yeah, she was awesome. Wiki. And and in seventeen here, you know, um, uh, Corey uh, Casey, Casey Simpson Simpson was yeah. was really terrific and really did great with the notes because in terms of you know it's funny when we were when we were talking the story. Uh, I remember talking to Alex about it, being like, we should really make this kid like a young John Candy from, from Plain Strange and Automobiles and that like he's, <laughs> he's annoying, but he's also just yearning for a friend and that will make it like, you'll, you'll, you'll sit with that, you know, and, and Corey and, and Casey was so good, by the way, it's hard not to call him Corey because his name is Casey, but he did so right. well at mm. both trying to access the age and playing with those tones of what, you know, and so really just any episode where I feel something for these new people who come in and out and I feel like they, I, I, I had those moments with them, whether it was on set or just watching the episode where I, I, I was able to care about them in this very compressed amount of time we have to tell our stories. Those are the ones I, that stick with me the most, I'd say, it's just those, the people that come in and, and leave a little mark on the show. Cause they're all, they're all leading characters for, for a week at a time. And, 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 uh, and they really love Kevin work on the show. It's really fun to work with those actors who come in and, and feel a part of the family. And Ray and Caitlin really set that tone and make them feel like they really are part of that fabric. Uh, I love that. And it, it's funny because it almost takes you back to like that golden age of television when that was kind of the norm, right? Like actors came in, they did their Playhouse 90 and then they they left and that was that, you know, it wasn't it wasn't about or Twilight Zone or whatever, you know, that kind of idea that the that it wasn't necessarily about carrying over the, the same cast. You just were doing you were doing the work. And um it's the bummer of this show because when someone hits it, <laughs> you can't really have them recur. If you're, if you're on another show and, and the character is really like, you know, electrifies the screen, you find a way to bring them back. And you, you know, with rare exceptions, it's hard to do that on this show. Right. Okay. So Nat Natalie, Natalie Britton, who played Holly, was like, I think that Holly tries to sort of uh, gold dig a marriage out of out of Corey in the future. And she's now holding on to the family fortune. <laughs> like that's, I'm going to take that back to the room and we're going to pitch that for season two for yeah. sure. So <laughs> along those lines, can you can you say, is there an actor out there that you would just love to get on the show? <laughs> like you, you you have an episode in mind or you have you have a character in mind. You don't know where they fit in an episode, but you want to get this particular actor <laughs> on the show. Uh, there's one that I'm yeah, there's one right now, so I can't say. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> super excited. Right. I, hope, I hope we're able to get them. I think it's going to work out. So uh, tune in in like a year and you'll see it. Oh, fantastic. So here's my last question that I'll throw it back to, to Sam to wrap up. So you had three episodes in a row, and I think this episode broke the streak unless I missed a reference. You had three episodes in a row that had Back to the Future references. <laughs> is, is there one particular writer in the room who is always like, oh, oh, we got it. We got to throw in, we got to throw in the bit. Or is it just like a collective energy in the room of, we are just like that back to the future is just like the, the collective energy. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Drew? I'm sorry. We get, paid, we get paid to do product placement for back to the future and our uh, the account had filled up. And so we didn't do anymore. <laughs> Have you been on the Universal Studios Backlot Tour? I mean, clearly there is product integration happening on Quantum Leap every week. But um, no, I think it's, I mean, it is maybe the best time travel story ever put on on screen. So why wouldn't we? Uh, I agree. Uh, reference that. it once in a while, but um, it's it's hard not to. I mean, if you hear if you hear the the numbers one nine five five in a row, you're going to think of Hill Valley. So that it's some of these things <laughs> become just inescapable in the lexicon. Sure. All right, last question. One more question, then we'll let you guys go. Um, we we thank you so much for for joining us and being generous with your time. Um, and that question would be. If you can, is there a time and place that you would want to go? Not necessarily that you want to write an episode about, but that you yourself would want to journey to. You don't have to put anything right or anything like that. You just get to go, you know, for a day, hang out. Any when, anywhere. Alex, what would you say? I think I'd go to the future just out of, out of curiosity. I think I'd want to go like <laughs> the future and just like figure out the end of this 
crazy story that we're in right now. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I want to live there for long, given what's going on in the world, but I'm, I'm extraordinarily curious about what the world is going to look like in about 25, 30 years. Absolutely. Drew, what about you? I'm the exact opposite. I would go far, far away before the internet age when, uh, <laughs> bef before we were infected with this horrible disease that is the World Wide Web. Um, You're going to go like back yeah. before the printing press? Like just uh, get uh, as not far that away. far back. <laughs> not that far back. Um, somewhere with decent music. But I mean, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I would I would go back. I would definitely go back. I, I think uh, just because I think we are all craving more tactile human connection than we've been settling for in the digital age so something sure. some a romantic era of the past um, but i can't choose one because they're all they're all fantastic i guess mm. i yeah no i hear that that's that's definitely how i feel as well uh gentlemen thank you so very much alex thank you for joining us for your first time congratulations <laughs> i thought the episode was great loved it and uh hope to hope to have you back uh again sometime thank you both for all the support for the show it's uh it's really fun uh to hear you all uh digging it so much absolutely it's 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 all true uh drew thank you so much for coming back um thank you for your kindness one thing that i i've said and i will say again is that everyone that we have met connected to the show has been so incredibly kind and so generous and just really really wonderful and you know you all are clearly passionate intelligent people and um you know we we really enjoy your work and so thank you for sharing your time with us and 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 uh giving us a peek behind the curtain and entertaining us beyond even what you put on the screen. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you both. And enjoy next week. You're going to, you're going to have lots to talk about. <sighs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Thank you so take very care. much for joining us. Uh, Dennis, what, what, what else you got? Anything, anything else you got before, before we wrap up and, and, and put this thing on the internet for all to hear? No, see, I think we're now in an awkward thing right now is like we we've let Drew and Alex like go on, but they're hanging around because they think that the that the thing is not over with. So they're just hello. <laughs> well, no, I, I literally started to do this. And then Sam said, and Dennis, anything else you want? And I was like, oh, we're still in it. OK, so. I, <laughs> no, no, yeah. So we did. We're, we're, are we free to go? Yeah, you so are you're free, free to go. go. <laughs> Thank you. I, I promise you, Drew, we will not edit this out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was already gone. Uh, we got it. We got to get our, our our groove better together. Yeah, um, part of our charm that we don't have our groove no, yeah. together. So, so uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, eternally phony. We didn't get to the question about the the Game of Thrones nod. If that was the organic in the end with the set design of this week's episode. Oh, I didn't. I didn't catch that. Oh, it was in the chat. But it was, yeah. I mean, oh, you I didn't, you, you, you I didn't catch the nod. The okay. nod. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, I watched the first episode of Game of Thrones as soon as they pushed the kid out of the window. It's like, nope, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> See, not I had read, my, not my show. I had read the books beforehand, or the ones that have been released anyway up to that point. So uh, uh, I kind of knew what I was in for. But um, yeah, no, I, it's always it's always hard. We 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 get to. Um, you know, we get this wonderful interaction from folks and we get this wonderful opportunity, of course, to talk to the people involved with the show. And inevitably there's going to be things that get missed along the way, but um, we appreciate you all for being here. It was, it was so nice uh, obviously to do the watch party again. And then of course, to get the opportunity to have, you know, Alex and Drew join us um, and, and, and talk to them, pick their brain, not only about this episode, but about the show in general. And, and, and it's always one of those things where, you think of so many questions that you didn't get the chance to ask as soon as it's over. Um, and, and, and so you, you always just hope that there's going to be a next time. So you get to ask some of those questions and we tend to go long anyway. And and that's why I'm always so grateful for people's generosity of time and, and their ability to to hang out with us and, and, and talk to us. And, you know, I think part of that is just a reflection of the fact that, you know, they are clearly as, as enthusiastic about the work that they do as we are about, you know, for lack of a better word, consuming that work. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and uh, this has been a really cool experience these, these past couple of weeks to be able to do it in front of a, a live zoom audience. So thank you all for, for being here and hanging out. I, I think, uh, I, I think it's just a given. We have to do this next week. Like I can't guarantee, oh. I, I can't guarantee that we're going to have 
any guests next week. No, but, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think this just now become needs to become like part of the part of the thing. Uh, I agree. I agree. The only thing I wish for next week, I wish it was a two hour finale. I know. I I agree. I completely agree. It's funny we didn't talk about that uh, in our in our episode. And by the way, let me just throw this out here real quick for anyone who's listening to this and has already listened to our other episode. The last like two or three minutes of the episode where I'm just talking like <laughs> riffing on my own. It has to do with the fact that for whatever reason, Dennis's feed did not completely upload. And so as I was listening back- The to reason, of- Sam, is because <laughs> the way Riverside works is I'm like, yeah, I'm going to leave my browser up, whatever. And then as soon as we stopped talking, I just shut my computer down and walked <laughs> away. And that's why. Uh, Ziggy was shut down and so was my computer. And that's why. But I think we only lost, yeah. It was, it, lost, was, like, it was literally like two or we three were doing the, we, we were doing the Midwest goodbye at that point. So it didn't yeah. really, yeah. So it yeah. matter. And by the way, Jimbe, for the record, when you asked the question of uh, can you talk about whether or not Ben had had leaped into himself in yeah. the finale, I was gearing up. God damn it, Sam. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I <language>. ruined it. <laughs> uh, you ruined it because I was waiting. I was going to ask the question is, can you talk about the decision to have Ben leap into himself? Oh, you teed it up. I just I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, 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 it's, it's, yeah. Well, yeah. Next time. No, next that's time. okay. That's okay. Because I, I almost thought about like later on, like coming back, like, can you talk about the decision to have Georgina Riley join the show as a regular cast member next season? <laughs> there you go. But then I thought <laughs> <laughs> we have good relationships with them and I don't want to, I don't want to. Yeah, I know. I always get to that point, and it's funny. I feel like Drew almost brings this out of me in a way. <laughs> I always get to that point in the conversation where I start to ask a question, and it's just like there's something about the look on his face where I haven't even gotten there yet, but I'm just like, I can't, I can't ask this question. He's not going to answer this question. <laughs> you got to ask those. You got to ask those questions because that's uh, how you get. That's how you get the stuff. I know. But at this I, point, I know it's become you... a bit, though, right? It's become a bit that I can't ask the question. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I agree. I really want, uh, yeah, I really want to see Janice, Georgina. I want, I want to see them become part of a regular cast next yeah. season. Like, like yeah. if not like a main cast member, like we see them in every episode. Like, I want to be somehow more recurring uh, than uh, yeah, more existing. recurring. I want yeah. them to be like, like, like a part of the part of the universe now i agree i would love and you know i i I wonder if just you know this is i mean i'm just kind of pulling this out of the air but i wonder if there's opportunities to to have like recurring guest stars um you know potentially like like martinez right like not necessarily another leaper but uh almost like uh, akin to something like trilogy or something right where where ben might visit the same same place or the same person multiple times like i think something like yeah something like that would be pretty cool because i think um i can't remember i think dean said this on the record i don't think he said this off the record um but he said, "Me do any editing work?" <laughs> no, 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 it, 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 no, 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 no. It's it's not a thing. But like he he said that next season the recurring story is more character driven and mm. not big mystery driven. Yes, it's not like a big and mystery so, box sort of thing. And so I wonder if they're going to be leaning more, leaning more into those kind of things. And yeah. Jay, uh, Jay, to answer your question, unless they are all just playing a long con. And keeping their cards really close to their vest, um, Scott Bakula is not going to appear in the in the season finale next week. Yeah, I would love it. I I would love it. I would have to change my pants. But <laughs> uh, I I think it would be you know it's weird because at this point it it would feel almost. Um, no, I don't want to say a throwaway because anything like if Scott appears for one second, it wouldn't feel like a throwaway. And yet at the same time, because I don't necessarily think it's a part of the story they're telling right now, I don't know how that would work or how that would fit or if that would be something that would appeal even to Scott. Right. Because we know that, you know, based off of the pilot script that that he read and, the, you know, and the, the, the little involvement that Sam had and the, the direction or lack thereof for the character of Sam after that, it didn't really appeal to him. So I would, I would kind of almost feel like they would have to have something big to say like, 
okay, you know, you're, you're just going to be in the last like 30 seconds of the episode, but this is what we're going to do next season. Like, I feel like it would have to be something big. And for me personally, I don't think that's the direction they're going yet. I have a feeling that we won't see him until, you know, late into the second season. If, if we see him at all. Sure. I would say, I mean, I think like maybe part of the reason, you know, we've talked about this is one, even though they put him in the pilot script, they really didn't have a plan for him. But right. two, even though still like for the 30 seconds he showed up, like he clearly had an agenda. He was working with Janice. Right. So I could see why Scott Bakley wouldn't do that. But if literally, if they just had a moment towards the end of the season finale next week, where just from a distance, you have Sam watching Ben and that's it. All right, God damn it! Now you've sold me. Just, just, um, just like, and th- th- that's the thing that that like that doesn't need to come back. That doesn't need to come back at the beginning of the next season or even the end. Like you could tease that for season three or season four, but just, just give us a bit. You, you know that Sam is still out there. He is aware of Ben, and yeah. he just lets him do his thing. Just like you know, like half block away, he just looks now like, huh, that's going on. And he turns around, he walks away. Right, right, right. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. But we will see. We <laughs> will see. Look, we're, you know, we are, we're not far uh, away now. It's less than a week as we sit here at uh, 11, 12 uh, in sure. the Midwest. It's, it's midnight for our friends on the East Coast. Um, I love that Audra, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Deep faked into star crossed. Um, uh, yeah. Just thank you so much to everyone that's here. Um, we really appreciate it. And thank you so much to everyone who is listening in the future. Uh, and um, I think that's about all, all the steam I've got. What about you, Dennis? You ready to leap appreciate out of here? I'm ready to leap out this time of recording. Zoom doesn't have a weird thing. We'll actually get this full episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's right we will yeah. um so thank you all so much for being here and you know what it's un- unfortunate she's not here anymore i wanted to give her a shout out early on um so hopefully she'll listen i don't know if she will but emily mulvey was here and, and she writes for dinner oh, Geek yeah. and has done their uh their reviews for quantum leap um this season and she's been uh you know a wonderful supporter uh of the show uh n- not our show i mean yes our show as well but but uh but you know quantum leap the the show proper um and uh so i just want to give her a quick shout out and thank her for joining us um but but all of you thank you so much for for being in the room and uh we'll we'll be here next week doing the watch along it's it's going to be intense uh i i don't know at all what to expect at this point you know we've seen the leap out we've seen the teaser here we are man it's a little over Mm -hmm. a year a little over a year it's it's basically like what like a year and eight weeks since that pilot script fell into our lap and here we are now getting ready to watch the season finale yeah it's going to be fun. Give us the screener <laughs> at oh, least a couple of days early. Please. We actually do have a guest lined up this time around. And I really don't want to have to like tell the guests like, yeah, we haven't seen it yet. So we you're, can't you're, talk to you. You're killing us. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. All right. But anyway, uh, we are going to get out of here uh, and, and hit that uh, record button to turn things off. But thank you all so much for joining us. Take care of yourself. Take care of one another. Stay safe out there. And remember to always leap responsibly.